Zen Gordita. All right, guys, I'm here with the review of all the equipment that I got for the setup here. I'm going to go ahead and start with these Corsair Void Pro headphones. Uh, they are extremely good. At first, I did not like them at all. Uh, the quality really wasn't there. Two things that helped with that that, I mean, were kind of common sense. First thing was uh, downloading the Corsair uh, software that you, you can go online and get. I don't believe it came in my box, so I wound up getting it online. But go ahead and download that software and then use the Dolby 7.1 surround sound of USB adapter. Those things together make these headphones one of the best sets I've ever had myself. Of course, I am sure there are better headsets out there, but for me, it is one of the best sets I've ever had. Um, I would highly recommend them for someone starting out, you know, at like 80 bucks for the, the wired pair. I think wireless were more expensive, uh, but for the wired pair, I think they were about 80 bucks. Uh, it, was, it was a really good deal, and I, I mean, I'd highly recommend them if you want a decent, really good sounding pair of headphones. Uh, moving on from that, I have the Razer Siren microphone, which is what I'm recording on right now. Uh, as you can hear, the audio quality, at least to myself, I feel like the audio quality is extremely good. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, the main reason I went with this over an Audio-Technica was mainly design. I, I felt like it looked nicer than the Audio-Technica. I liked the black design. I liked the, the flattened off top and bottom instead of the rounded top and bottom. And uh, I like that it has this little LCD display on the back that whenever I adjust things, it shows me as I'm adjusting it what level it's at. Uh, I would highly recommend this mic. It is a little on the higher side for a beginning mic, I'd say, for price range. At, uh, I think it was about 129 bucks when you could have gotten an Audio Technica for 80 bucks. Uh, so it is a little on the higher side there. But I still would recommend it if you had a little extra to spend and you wanted to, this was something you were questioning buying, I would recommend buying this. Uh, moving on from that, I have the Logitech Brio camera, which is what we're recording on right now. As you can see, the quality is pretty good, um, but it is just not quite what I expected. I feel like my Galaxy S8 has better 4K than this Logitech Brio does. They both are 4K HDR capable. Like I said, my S8 Plus has uh, better 4K video than, than this camera does, I'd say. Um, and the, the price range for it at about 200 bucks, it's extremely expensive. So beginning, I would recommend uh, going back and getting a 1080p and uh, you know, you can get this for like 80 bucks. And I would highly recommend doing that over getting the Logitech Brio. That's just my opinion. I don't feel like I'm going to get what I paid for it out of it. Um, yeah. Moving on from that, I've got the, I'll go on to my racing setup here. Uh, of course, I've got the, the uh, Extreme Pro Delta Series chair. I love this chair. The bolstering is amazing. Uh, the seat feels really great. It comes with these pads. I took off the lower back pad because it kind of pushes you a little far forward, but I've left the head pad on. Um, the seat is really amazing. For the price at $249, uh, it was up there in comfort level with the $400, $500 chairs. Uh, just because it doesn't have those bigger name brands, I guess you it's, it's able to go for cheaper. And I mean, it does all the things, you know, I've got the adjustments for like how far the, the chair itself leans back. So now I can lean back further, you know, lock it in place and locked back here, has height adjustments. And then it also has the, uh, hold on, let me do the, the whole recline. The back itself reclines extremely far all the way back like this. <sighs> And that's just the back. So, I mean, if I reclined it, if I'd had the, the, the base itself lean back and then I reclined it, I could probably touch the floor, but I'm going to flip the chair before I do that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but, yeah, so I, I really like this chair. Uh, for the price, it, it's you can't pass it up. It, I would highly recommend this. If you're looking to build a setup and a racing-style chair is in your, your wants, I would recommend this chair. Do not get the Alpha Series though. Whatever you do, save yourself. Do not get that Alpha Series. It is complete crap. Uh, yeah, just don't don't even bother. Okay. Sorry, my little girl's in here hooting and hollering at me. Uh, but moving on from that, I got the uh, Logitech G29 uh, racing wheel and the H-Pattern shifter to go along with it. Um, 
I, I, I do enjoy it in game. It is a completely different aspect, aspect to be able to shift and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of the other shifters don't come with uh, the clutch pedal, so I do do the clutched manual setup. Uh, it's really fun like that. I, I really enjoy it, you know, because I've had a few racing cars myself. I, I've had an RSX Type S, not really a racing car for that one, um, but it was clutched in manual. And uh, I've, I'm able to go into the Forza, whenever, I'll go over this in the review, but you can go in the Forza. I made the car about act the same as what I had, and uh, it's fun to be able to drive that. And then I had my WRX STI that I had to get rid of, um, and that one was clutched manual, and that, that one's really fun to be able to go in and re-experience that kind of feel of the vehicle again like that. I really like that. Um, but so that, that's really cool, but for the price of these wheels... They are a little obnoxious, and for, you know, the feel of them, the force feedback and all that stuff in-game, the quality of the build itself, uh, when I compare it to, I, I used to have a Dragon Force GT, like one of the low-end Logitech uh, steering wheels. Um, when I compare everything, it's really not that much difference. In reality, the, the big money extra was for clutch pedal and the ability to use the H-pattern shifter, which, I mean, to me, isn't really worth it that much. Um, if you already have a Driving Force GT and you're playing on PC, I wouldn't recommend upgrading to any more expensive wheel. Uh, the only reason I went with this over the Driving Force GT is because this G29 is um, PlayStation 4 ca capable. So I have a PlayStation 4 for my secondary console, uh, and then I have my computers for my primary uh, what I usually game on. But so if I want to get Gran Turismo, I can take this over and use it on my PlayStation now. That's the main reason I paid the extra for this. Uh, now I did get an extremely good deal on this wheel setup. Uh, so for the shifter, it was on sale at Best Buy for 39 bucks, And the uh, steering wheel was on sale at Best Buy for 269 bucks. I went to Fry's. Fry's does price matching, and I was able to get it right there and then there at Fry's. If I had done it through Best Buy, the wheel I would have had to ship to me, and it would have taken a while. Uh, this I was able to go and you know get it right then and there at Fry's for the same price. So I got a really good deal online at Fry's. These the steering wheel itself was three ninety nine. Like I said, I only paid two sixty nine. That's one hundred and thirty bucks less than their online price at Fry's. Um, the, the shifter was uh, $69.99 or $59.99, I think, something like that. So I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks off the shifter. Uh, so altogether, I got a really good deal on those. Uh, moving on from that, I'll go on to the laptops now. Um, both of them are Alienwares. Uh, it, I know it makes it look like I really like Alienwares. You're like, oh god, he's got two Alienwares. No, that is wrong. I do not like Alienwares. I got both of them situationally based. Um, now, one big thing that, uh, the main reason I don't like these Alienwares is, you know, they, they just don't have cooling capability for what they are, I guess. Um, the, uh, the main thing I think that affects that is the i7s, because I have had an HP before in the past that had an i7 also. All three of these laptops, or both these Alienwares and that HP all had i7s and they all had heating problems. Now I've had i5s and I've had different AMD based laptops um, and none of them seem to have those cooling problems where they would get so hot. Uh, so it seems like it might be partially due to it being i7s in them, but I, I can't say 100% sure. Now I will say on my 17R2, its cooling problem is not just that it is an i7. It is that it is a piece of crap. The, uh, the firmware inside the computer doesn't tell the fans to kick on when it reaches the temperatures. Now it does monitor it, and I made sure with Alienware I called them, had their tech support come in and remotely monitor my laptop while I was in there too. Um, and we monitored the temperatures in the fans, and the temperatures would reach, and the fans would do nothing. Uh, so the guy went and made sure the firmwares were updated and everything, and it still changed nothing. And Unfortunately, at the time, I was outside of my warranty, so I couldn't do anything about it. Um, but I was able to go in Google, and I found an a, uh, application that allows you to control the fans yourself, so you can set how fast they're going. Every time I start game, or I used to game on that, I would set the fans all the way up. it keep the laptop nice and cool. Uh, the other big thing is the vents on the back for the exhaust ports. They are extremely small, a small surface area. If you set it in your lap and you have like a pillow or a blanket, 
it's going to block it up and you're going to overheat the laptop. Also, the intakes are on the bottom of the laptop. So, uh, you know, if you're blocking that with a blanket or a pillow, again, you're going to overheat the laptop because there's no airflow in. So I highly recommend if you have either to get some type of cooling pad, which I did for my 17 R4. I got this nice, nice thermal take uh, cooling pad. It was only like 40 bucks. It has all types of controls. It has temperature so monitors. Really like so it has four different four sectors. It tells me each sector's temperature. It has turbos that I can set it to to boost cool those fans up to go faster. There's an auto manual mode. Uh, if you set it to automatic, then it uh, automatically adjusts the fan speed to keep the laptop within a cooler temperature. Um, so I, I really like this this cooling pad for 40 bucks. It's a steal if you're in the same situation as me with an i7 based laptop that can't keep cool on its own. I highly recommend getting this thermal take cooler. It's the uh, massive TM thermal take. It does have two um, huge cooling fans in it. Um, I'll probably wind up getting a second one for my R2. Uh, so my decision, since I do have these two laptops, originally I was going to have my six-year-old gaming on my R2. Uh, he wants to play like Minecraft and stuff, so I was going to let him do that. Uh, but I've decided I'm just going to get a Minecraft for his Nintendo Switch since they have the Minecraft story mode now for that. Uh, and I'm going to use the R2 as my streaming OBS software using laptop. And I'm going to use my R4 as my gaming laptop. I found out that the uh, 6710 HQ that the R4 has just isn't enough CPU on its own to do gaming and the uh, OBS software stuff. Uh, I, was, I found out that I had to lower the quality of the uh, recording on OBS and I had to lower the quality of the game itself. On, in uh, Forza 7 was the one I tested it on. Uh, so in Forza 7 alone, I'm able to run it in Ultra. Whenever I put it in with the OBS software, I was either between uh, high and medium settings. Um, so my plan is to use the R2 to use to do all the OBS recording and streaming. I'll get a capture card in between the two, and then I'll have the R4 for the actual gaming. Hopefully that will give me better performance, and I'll be able to produce better quality uh, videos and streams for you guys. So I'll go ahead and do the R2 st uh, specs. It's got a Intel Core i7-4710HQ. It's got a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970M uh, GPU. It's got, it came with 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I upgraded to 16 gigabytes and it has a uh, one terabyte regular hard drive, uh, 5400 RPM. Um, so, and then it has the 1080p monitor. It's, it was a decent laptop. Back when I got it, it was pretty much top of the line. Uh, you know, 980M was the only graphics card above what I had, or 980s were the only one up that you could do for a laptop, 980M for the laptop. Um, my plan originally was to get the graphics amplifier and do a 1080 or 1080 Ti uh, attached to this. The graphics amplifier is an Alienware specific device that allows you to use any desktop graphics card as your... Uh, dedicated graphics card for your laptop. Now it is an external device, it is quite sizable. It's not something that's very portable. Um, that is why I decided to go ahead and get this R4. Uh, and I was part of why I decided to get this R4. I paid a thousand bucks for this R4. It was a $1,700 laptop. Um, it has an Intel Core i7 6700 HQ. Like I said, that's where my bottleneck is becoming uh, because when I'm doing OBS and stream and uh, the games. So. Uh, so that 6700 isn't enough. It is enough just for gaming, but not for the uh, multitasking with the OBS. Um, and then it has an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 graphics card. My understanding is that the processor on this graphics card is the same as the desktop version. Um, of course, it is in a laptop form, so it doesn't have the cooling, and uh, there's probably some other things it doesn't have. So I'd imagine the performance isn't fully the same. Um, oh, sorry, one thing I did forget to say about that graphics amplifier, it does have a f about a 5 to 10% difference between using the same graphics card in a desktop versus using it in that graphics amplifier. Um, anyways, moving on from that, it has 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's upgradable to 32, which is a big increase, that's double what the R2 was upgradable to, the R2 was only upgradable to 16 gigabytes. Uh, and then the R4, it had a 1 terabyte, 7200 RPM. A regular hard drive and it had a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. I added in a 256 gigabyte solid state drive and I'm going to get a third 
uh, 500 gigabyte solid state drive. All three solid state or both solid states I have right now are M.2s and the third one will be an M.2 also. So that's the, this laptop, it also does have the 1080p monitor. Uh, so the 17R4 has a slightly better cooling option on it. Uh, the, the exhaust ports themselves extend out past the laptop slightly. Um, and it has, uh, it doesn't only have exhaust ports straight up the back, it also has them on the top and I believe on the bottom. The intake is still on the bottom only. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to put the intake anywhere else on the laptop, kind of. I guess some of them I have seen had on the sides. Uh, Actually, sorry, I just felt this. This feels like there might be intakes on the sides, too. So maybe there's intakes on the sides of this, but the biggest ones are on the bottom. Um, but so it does have better cooling. This one I can keep in my lap, and it will, the fans do adjust themselves. The firmware actually works. The laptop does what it's supposed to do, and it changes the rate that the fans work at. Um, but it still doesn't keep it cool enough to my liking. Thus, why I got this thermal take cooling pad underneath it. Um, both laptops are very good. If you're in the market for a laptop and these are kind of something you're looking at, I would highly recommend them, especially the ten, the uh, the R4 with the 1070. The 1070 is an extremely good uh, graphics card. I've been able to play all my games on Ultra Sense. So the, the R4, I would highly recommend it if you're in the market for a laptop and you can find a good deal on it. Now, I'm sure there are better laptops out there, better deals, and, you know, more capable laptops. Uh, the one thing I would recommend is getting a better... Uh, G or CPU if you were in the, if you could afford it um, that'd be the biggest thing I could afford uh, if you're in the market for a, a desktop setup then I mean of course try to make sure you get as best the best uh, CPU you can get and then I'd recommend either 1070 or 1080 uh, to be able to do modern games and the uh, modern uh, OBS software and all that stuff but for me right now this works you know I can. I have the two laptops, so like I was saying, one for streaming, one for gaming. Together, they'll work perfectly. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the setup, guys. Let me know if there's any other specifics you want to know about. Um, if there's anything you want me to go into detail more about. I'm not the most technical guy, but I am somewhat technical. I know my way around all this equipment and through all the games. Um, if there's any games you want me to do specifically, let me know. I have all types of games. If there's something specific in a game, you know, I'm about to upload some Forza 7 stuff. If there's something cool you want to see in Forza 7, if there's a certain vehicle you want to know if it's worth buying the, the package for or something like that, let me know. I'll, I'll get that uploaded for you as quick as possible. Um, and let me know if there's any games. Like I said, I'll, I'll try to get them and uh, do an upload for that. Games I do plan to have in the future upcoming are the... Uh, uh, what's it called? Player Unknown Battleground. I'm gonna get that. Uh, Battlefront 2, the Star Wars game. Whenever that comes out, I'll be getting that. Uh, there's a few other ones out there. Um, I might do Need for Speed Payback. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll I'll probably wait on that one. But yeah, just let me guys let me know what you guys want to see. Um, as always, like and subscribe. Uh, I know it's a new channel, starting out fresh. Sorry about my baby girl. She's a little cranky over there. I think she's upset because she closed the door on us and she doesn't know how to open it. But anyway, so like and subscribe. That's the only way I'm going to be able to do more things and continue to build this channel more. Um, as long as I get a good fan base and amount of subscribers, I'll start doing giveaways. I'll probably uh, start off with giving away equipment as I upgrade it. So like if I, I get a new headset, I'll give away this as long as it's not all beat up and dirty. If I get a new mic, I'll give away right that. I'm not going to give away things that are all crappy and beat up though. Um, and then as if it keeps growing and it gets big enough, of course, maybe I'll do double buys. If I buy something new, I'll buy a, two of them and give away one and keep one for myself, something like that. So just keep on going, guys. Keep the uh, likes, subscribes coming. Uh, you know, share this with your friends. Uh, I'll have this Forza video up soon. Let me know if there's anything you want uh, to come out of this, any specific things you want to see. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.